Hey, welcome to the Access Podcast. We are here to equip and mobilize young Christians in identity and evangelism. Hope you enjoy the video. Hey guys, today we're here to talk about dating and relationships on the Access Podcast. So we have Tiffany. Hi. We have Alon. What up? And we have me. My name is Kimmy, and we're here to talk about dating. So to start, Tiffany, why don't you go ahead and share your love story with My us? My love story. So I met Tyler about eight years ago. I'm him through his sister, and uh, he we bumped into church and, at church, and he immediately, I guess, liked what he saw. <laughs> <laughs> And at the time, I was 24 years old, but for some reason, his parents thought I was 28. He was like, she's too old for you. And Tyler was 18, turning, about to turn 19. He's like, 28, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So he, <laughs> I'm like, okay. But he, yeah, he was pretty persistent. I said no a few times because of the age gap. I'm five years older than him. Mm -hmm. But he was very persistent. And we are now happily married for six years. Wow. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. All right. Alon, <laughs> why don't you share your love story? Yeah. So I met the Lord when I was five. And uh, it's uh, been a good time. Yeah. Amen. He's the best bridegroom. <laughs> the best what? <laughs> the best bride ever? He's the best bridegroom. Bridegroom? Bridegroom. bridegroom. Yeah. Is that what you originally said? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah yes all right i'll share my love story oh yeah so share yours i'm engaged currently i'm getting married next month hey. september 17 wow. very exciting yes yeah, so i met brian january of 2021 and he was very cute but he was a jerk so mm -hmm. i prayed for him and yeah we started dating in april and then dated for a little over a year and then we just got engaged now we're engaged we just bought our first house hey, and he's living there thanks mm -hmm. and yeah we're getting married next month so Yay. obviously there's a lot more details but we'll get into that later Amen. <laughs> yeah Yay. so to start off now you guys know a little bit about us we are um, going to talk about preparation and what it looks like to prepare for dating um, and entering into a relationship so obviously Tiffany you're married mm -hmm. I'm engaged Alon is single right now and so we will we all have a little different we're all in different areas and so we all have some different opinions so preparation what did your preparation look like what does your preparation look like how does that how did that look for you guys practically me you who goes first okay me <laughs> <laughs> um Preparation. I honestly, I, I don't feel like I did much preparation when I think about it. Um, I, I guess what I would say is I prayed a lot. Mm -hmm. I prayed a lot. Um, I have, my dad has always been my spiritual leader and the guy that I go to for everything. He's one, like my best friend. Mm -hmm. And when I turned 24, uh, I was like, dad, I just really feel like I'm longing to become one, like become one with you know whoever my future husband's gonna be he's like okay well let's you know let's pray and earlier on that year that specific year I had had my first boyfriend at the age of 24 and uh realized that I was going all about it the wrong way mm -hmm. so broke that off I took six months of just focusing on my relationship with the Lord um and learning to figure out why I wanted to be in a relationship. A lot of the times I wanted to be in a relationship just because I was lonely or, you know, all my friends were dating someone. Mm -hmm. I wanted, you know, kind of a Hollywood or, or Disney and all of these love stories tell you to have. And I had all the wrong reasons to why I was pursuing relationships. So when I took those six months, um, I just really focused on my relationship with Christ and my identity, who God called me to be. Mm -hmm. And then um, came to a point where I, I felt like I was stabled in who I was and who God called me to be. Got my dad involved. We prayed um, for about a few months before actually Tyler came into the picture. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say I think anything leading up to that was just figuring out who I, I was, mm -hmm. knowing my identity, because yeah. um, I think it can be very, very dangerous when you don't know who you are getting yourself involved with someone else yeah um so that's kind of kind of i think some of the things that i did yeah yeah that's good 
Mm-hmm. Alan, what did your what does your preparation season look like? Um, I feel like it looks like a lot of different things. Um, I think it started off a few years ago um, with just like learning about how to date well, like in a godly way, because I w- grew up Christian, but I went to public school and honestly was probably more into the world and what they were doing. And so my perception of dating was off. So once I like recommitted my life to the Lord, I I was like, oh, I can actually just, there's actually resources out there for me to learn about this. So I started mm-hmm. to educate myself on how to date well. And I found different resources and podcasts to listen to. So that was like the first thing that I did. And then, then I was like, okay, I feel like I'm starting to understand what I like to do like my personal hobbies and mm-hmm. things like that. And then I was like, I need, I feel like there's things from my past, just not like crazy thing, but there's things that I wanted to work on. So then I started going to counseling to just work through that because I didn't want, I don't want to bring the things that I've dealt with before into a relationship. And mm-hmm. I want to be able to kind of be able to give myself more because I'm not focused on the things of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say currently I feel like it's just more of, being intentional of my relationship with God and doing life with him and Mm -hmm. bringing him in and just growing in that. Yeah. That's so good. Mm -hmm. I know my preparation season looked like, um, it was a lot of figuring out like, who do I, what do, what characteristics do I want Mm -hmm. in a spouse? And then making sure that like, it's like two way, right? Like I can't expect this like amazing man with all these great characteristics. And then I'm just like down here having none, no good characteristics. Mm-hmm. And that so was finding like, what characteristics do I expect for my husband to have? And how can I begin to obtain those? Mm-hmm. And a lot of that rooted from like looking in the scriptures, seeing like who, what kind of man was Jesus and what characteristics that he have? Mm-hmm. Um, and how can I, obtain those and how can I gain that and really just focusing on a lot of his identity that's kind Mm -hmm, of what we're talking about too is being firm in your identity so that you don't feed off of the spouse that you do find but your Mm -hmm. true source is Jesus in that and so once you become firm on that foundation when you know who you are and you know what you're worth Mm -hmm. I feel like it's easier to um, know like who you want to who do you want to date and who do you Mm want to marry one day yeah. yeah. So in that also, it's like how a good question. How do you know that uh, or sorry, how do you know what are good boundaries and what are good values to have in dating? So as you're now like entering or as you're preparing and you're you're learning who you are, like how how have you, did you guys or did you not maybe like lay out boundaries? Did you do that before you entered into a relationship or did you do that after did you never do that? What does that kind of look like for you guys? I mean, I think you guys um, are super benefiting from the resources mm-hmm. that you're getting from, you know, access. Mm-hmm. And because I feel like eight years ago, I didn't have what's being offered to you guys right now. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to seek out help mm-hmm. in setting, like, how do you set boundaries? Um I think there was the basic knowledge of you don't have sex. So that's, that's, that's the only boundary that I know you do not have sex. Um, and for me, it was, I was the first, um, in my friend group to be in a relationship and I didn't have anyone, obviously I'm not going to talk to my dad (laughs) about some of the, you know, some of the things that Tyler and I were struggling with. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't have a mentor someone that I can go to and talk to about, hey, you know, Tyler and I are struggling with um, making out and, you know, how far we can take it without having sex. And mm-hmm. um, so finding, I think, resources and finding someone that you can confine in to talk to about some of the struggles that maybe you have um, to help you create healthy boundaries. Yeah. Because we really struggled to have boundaries because we didn't know how to. Mm-hmm. We just we were always just told don't do, which is whenever you tell someone don't do, it really pushes them right. to want to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's I really good. loved what Kaylin said about her and Eli at Access a few weeks ago about how they both like wrote down their like list of mm-hmm. boundaries and they came together and they like said okay these are my boundaries and how to like. I guess, collectively make their own relationship boundaries, which Mm -hmm. I thought was really cool. 
but I think for like if you're trying to figure out what you're looking for in, in someone I think I my parents my mom told me about how they met and what she wanted and she like made her list and she was very specific and mm-hmm. she got all the things she wanted um, and I think that for I think it is good to for me as like who I am I need to like if I'm even going to get work done I need to write down what I'm doing mm-hmm. so I would say like over time I've written down things and I've narrowed it down and I've taken away all like the superficial things and I've been able to focus in more on like no like I want someone who's kingdom focused mm-hmm. and who serves and has a heart for these things so that I'm not just like you know, walking around like a deer with at headlights, not knowing what I want. Yeah. But I have, I have a guideline for what I am looking for, but I'm, that's the guideline. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not good. the box I'm trapped in. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. No, no, boxes. Boxes. no boxes. No boxes. <laughs> Except if you're moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So for me, that looks like, um, even before like Brian was in my picture, it was really as I was learning who I was and like who, like what I'm worth, I learned like the values that I just carry in my life um, and like values of honor and values of, of love and respect. And so I began to make a list of values that I want to carry on like throughout my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, And in that, I feel like that made it really easy to, transfer over into a relationship because it was like oh I want these same Mm -hmm. values and like we have a value of purity and so I think creating values and then creating boundaries to protect the values Mm -hmm. um, is what really works and we talk Jake talks about this all the time at Access and it's it's actually like when we talk about at Real Talk he's like you're actually saying yes to sex but you're saying yes to it in the right means that you're saying yes to it in marriage Mm -hmm. so you have boundaries to protect your yes so Mm -hmm. it's rather than saying like okay let's have this list of no's we're actually we have a list of yeses and then a list of no's to protect our yes and so that has been very um beneficial for me and Brian um obviously like we all make mistakes and we all fall but it's always good because you can go back to your yes and you can realize like well why when we're having this struggle like with this boundary like when we want to push it it was like okay go back to the heart of it it's we're actually saying yes to this and it it just keeps it so much more like um just the heart there's a vision there's a heart and there's a reason why you're saying no it's because you're actually saying yes you're protecting that value Mm -hmm. um and when you both agree on those things like kaylin and eli made the list when you agree on those things it's good because it's never one person always pushing the other it's good to be um unified in that list of values and boundaries yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. anything else to add to that no Mm -mm. cool all right so next we're going to go into talking about the dating season um so a word and term that we use at access a lot is low risk dating so that means dating without the pressure and intent of marriage on your first or second date basically right and so alan what might that like or how has that idea of low risk dating changed your view or approach to dating um i think it's just helped me not put pressure on people mm-hmm. i think before like growing up in the church i think i had that pressure because you don't want to i just don't want to waste time you don't want to waste their time you don't want to waste your time Mm -hmm. but I think that um because we were talking about it earlier there's a way you can low risk date with the intentions of you know getting married or getting into a relationship it's just not initially putting all this pressure on someone to have to become in like yeah to have to become your spouse like even as like you if you're going on a date with someone and you're in your mind, you're like, OK, I'm trying to figure out if this person's going to actually be the one. And then you're not even focused on really getting to know this person. You're just so consumed with checking off these boxes. Mm-hmm. And then this person you're on the date with is kind of sitting there and they're like uncomfortable because they feel like they're being interrogated. <laughs> right. And it's just not it's not natural. It's not really authentic. It's mm-hmm. just like you trying to get what you want and check yeah. off boxes and not just, you know, really getting to know someone Yeah. because I mean, that's person's going to be your best friend forever. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the pressure is off. Kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of like when Jake was speaking on relationships of like viewing them 
instead of viewing them as a potential, like this is going to be my husband, Mm -hmm. viewing them as your brother in Christ, your Mm -hmm. sister in Christ. I think having that perspective can change the way that you even approach, you know, someone that you might be interested in, Mm -hmm. um, in a way that's honoring to them versus like, Ooh, like, right. I can see myself marrying this guy, which is not bad to think, but if that's what your mind is completely consumed by, Mm -hmm. then you're not going to be able to fully value them as who they are. Yeah. So I feel like even like going on dates, you have, it's more than just a checklist Mm -hmm. because really when it comes down to it, when you're married, it's more like your, your boxes are checked and not what you live with him every day. Mm -hmm. You get to see the all authenticness of who he is. Mm -hmm. And if you never get to know that before you commit to that, Mm -hmm. then, then really you are just kind of wasting your time in the long run. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a relationship you want to get to know the person in their Mm -hmm. heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ben Stewart said, um, in dating, you're looking for a person to love, not a product to consume. And Ooh. so mm, okay. it's just like a That's good. Yes. good thing to think about. Mm-hmm. What, what book is that in? Do you know? It's actually not in a book. It's oh. actually, well, he has this um, on the Bible app. He has a devotional mm. based off of his book, Single Dating Engaged Marriage. Nice. And so that was a quote in the devotional. So it's cool. free. Ben, it's free. Ben Stewart. It's free. Ben Stewart. Single Dating Engaged Married. He it's has a book bookshelf. and a <laughs> devotional. <laughs> Have you read? read. <laughs> it's on my read side, not the red side. Nice. Yes. Yes. Very organized. Yes. So a good question that everybody loves to ask is, how do you know that the person is the one? How do you know that they're the one? How do you know, Tiffany? How do you know, Tiff? How do I know? Tell us. Oh, my. Um, my story is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said earlier, uh my dad and I were very intentional about prayer. And so, so was Tyler. Um, I became very fearful when I decided that maybe I was interested in pursuing a relationship with, uh, with him. And I remember, um, a week into having those conversations. I was like, Tyler, I just can't, I can't do this. Like I'm, I'm, I I don't want to do this. And he was like, Oh, okay, that's fine. And then he kind of waited a little bit, texted me back. He's like, would you please just mind praying about it? And that to me sparked a little of interest of like, oh, okay, like he wants to pray about it. That sounds like a spiritual thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we were very intentional. He prayed. Um, his parents were praying for us as well. And I was praying, my dad was praying. And um, we just felt like the Lord was giving us a lot of peace to just pursue this relationship. I don't think there's such a thing as like the one that God mm-hmm. has saved for you. Um, I think God will bless a relationship if you choose to pursue it as i as long as it's it's you guys are following like the same values yeah. have you know similar agreements as far as your your beliefs in christ and and all that sorts but we just felt a lot of peace when we were praying about it um of just god saying i'm blessing this if you per- mm-hmm. if you decide to pursue this mm-hmm. um as far as when i knew that tyler specifically was the one i wanted to marry that's when i said yes to him as as far as dating mm-hmm. um my love language is acts of service. Um, I knew he was the one when I got really, really sick. <laughs> I was on the phone with him and I, I was like, I was just throwing up. And <laughs> Hispanics believe that lime and salt can help with your stomach if you have an upset stomach. And I was like, yeah, I just, I'm out of limes. So like I need lime and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he lives out indoor. I'm in Grand Rapids. Uh, it's about like a 20, 30 minute drive. And he's still on the phone. I have no idea what he's doing. A half hour later, there's a, um, a doorbell, like the doorbell goes off. And I'm like, who is here? And he, I go up to the stairs. And I'm like, oh, it's you. He <laughs> ran out to go get me lines Aww. to help me. And then he's like, I, I was throwing up the whole night. My parents ended up ha- having to come and check on me as well. And, and Tyler spent the whole night with me next to the toilet as I was mm. throwing up, holding my hair wow. and just poor guy had to go to school the next day because <laughs> he was in college mm-hmm. and he had a morning class. And um, the fact that he served me the way that he did um showed me a side of him of just like I can see him being there with me in the good and in the bad Mm -hmm. um so for me that's when I knew okay this is the guy that I I would like to spend the rest of my life with yeah wow but yeah that's so sweet that's so cute so cute um well the funny story is when I was a kid 
I remember I used to do this all the time. I was when we I used to spend a lot of time in the car, so I'd be in the car, and I would just randomly think like, I wonder. So this was before I knew the Lord. I wonder. So I went. No, sorry. Back, back, back. So everyone was like on this like high of like a soulmate, right? Like there's mm. one person for you. Mm-hmm. So remember, I would, we were just driving the car, and I was like, "What if my soulmate is dead?" Uh- <laughs> Like, <laughs> like, what if he like died in a car accident? Like, that sucks. I'm never gonna get married. Wow, mm. that's so. Sad. So just like, if you ever thought that, you're not alone. It's okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, since I like met the Lord, I guess I had just a different, and I've aged and grown up. I guess I've just realized that I don't think that is true. I don't think that there's one person destined for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that you know that a person like is the one that you want to spend the rest rest of your life with is. Um, especially like family, like their family Mm. and your, both of your families. Like if they, if you have good relationships with your family and your families, um, like your, your spouse or your, your partner, um, the person that you're dating, um, I think that that's a good sign. Um, I loved Brian's family so much and they loved me. And so I think that that was a, a good sign for me. Mm. Um, also like I loved Brian and so, um, and just realizing like the characteristics that he has and um, just praying. And I remember praying a lot about like God, like I see who he is now, but like, who do you, who do you call him to be like five years from now? Who do you call him to be 20 years from now? And is that, is that person still a man that I want to, to marry and to be with and to spend the rest of my life with? Um, And through that, I just continue to see um, who the Lord has called him to be. And that's just a man that I want um, to spend the rest of my life with. And we had a lot of shared values. We have a lot of um, shared beliefs. And mm-hmm. I also feel like our, or just our hearts, like for ministry and for the kingdom of God are very aligned. Um, and we've given God our yes. And so I believe that he's going to use us very powerfully in the kingdom work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like in a way it's just a lot of prayer. It's having peace. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, like, I believe the Lord will bless it and things will align very well. Yeah. So I guess that's, I've never really thought about that question for me specifically. I just always used to think when I was a kid, like, what if my soulmate died in a car accident? <laughs> oh my. Wow. Well, it's real. It's a real it's thought. A real thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you have any thoughts on? No. That? Okay. <laughs> that's all right. So lastly, we'll talk about, Um, so in like dating and in relationships and continuing, like, how do you keep it godly? Like, how do you keep God at the center of your relationship? Um, and how do you like pursue him in a relationship with your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, on and on? Um, we were just talking about this earlier. Tyler and I are kind of trying to figure out that for ourselves right now because we do a really good job at pursuing Christ as individuals Mm -hmm. um but we haven't always done the greatest job as doing it together as a married couple um and we're trying to figure out what does that look like for us Mm -hmm. um because our life right now is hectic with schedules he works for a startup business so he has always working at all types of hours I sometimes only see him for like maybe a few hours a week Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but I think one thing for me that I'm I'm realizing is um consistently praying for him as his wife Mm -hmm. because we are one you know uh being able to be praying for him even though we might not be able to be doing you know doing it together and and finding little times uh one one thing that tyler brought up was why don't we take communion together while we are you know having dinner and take that moment to to read a little bit of scripture uh, take communion and have fellowship um kind of basing it off of acts 242 um taking just little steps that work with us and our schedule Mm -hmm. um because I'm with my schedule here at work. I'm always busy with rehearsals or services. Um, so it's just kind of hard for us. So we're trying to, right now we're in that season of figuring out what does that look like mm-hmm. for us? Because yeah. as when we were dating, we kept it very much as you seek the Lord your way and I seek the Lord my way. Um, 
and didn't know how to incorporate that or whether we should have incorporated that in our dating season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know for me and Brian recently, um, throughout our dating time as well, we each just kind of sought the Lord together. We'd pray together um, during meals and we would go to church together. Um, we actually had this value of well, like when we come to church, we don't come to church to hang out with each other. We come to church to fellowship with our other fellow believers mm-hmm. and to learn to grow in the Lord, um, which is interesting. And it's not a very common value boundary that you would think um, that a lot of people would have. But that was something that we had. Obviously, we still sat next to each other and stuff. But our main focus was like seeking the Lord in that area. Mm-hmm. Um But yeah, so as we're even in our engagement season right now, um, stepping into that, we've been having conversations. How do we, how do we merge that? What's like, what's a healthy way to build our marriage on the rock together Mm -hmm. because you are becoming one. So does that mean like completely becoming one or is it like still separate and like just right next to each other? Mm -hmm. Um, What does that look like? And things that we've talked about that we have come to the conclusion of as of right now are it's actually really good for us to continue to pursue the Lord on our own because like you don't want your faith to rely on another person I shouldn't Mm -hmm. like we shouldn't only be pursuing the Lord Mm -hmm. when we're together because because that's just not healthy it's it's not putting your full faith on the Lord it's Mm -hmm. it's relying on another person Um, so having that and like just in the overflow of that opening up our hearts to one another about Mm -hmm. um, just conversating what is the Lord doing in your heart what is he teaching you what are things that you have questions about talking about Mm -hmm. questions about things in the Bible that are might be confusing Um, maybe doing scripture studies together would be a good way to pursue the Lord together in marriage Um, Mm -hmm. but I think too like I was talking to Pastor Jake about it and he was saying that when you, like you can pray together or you can like pray together. Like there's like intimate prayers and there's like almost like surface level prayers. Mm-hmm. Um, and deeply like in the spirit, like praying with the Lord can actually um, like, it's like a, it can create a soul tie because it's very intimate. It's a very intimate thing. Yeah. Um, it can actually almost have the same effect on on you as like a a bad um physical soul tie it's like Mm -hmm. it can be the same like spiritual and physical soul ties Mm -hmm. um when it's a good thing but if you're dating and then you end up breaking up with that person but you've like gone to the depths of your soul with them um that that's really difficult to like obviously there's redemption and the lord will can redeem that but it's really hard to Mm -hmm. um like recover from that easily if you've gone to the depths and so jake was just sharing with us how it can actually be more um, sacred and holy to keep that like the depths of seek- seeking the Lord together for marriage. Um, and in that it's like, it's a very special thing. It's a very covenantal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and just being open with one another. Yeah. Um, and also something that we have talked about is even in that, right, we have each other. And so it'll be like, God is our first priority and then it's each other. Mm-hmm. So being open with one another about things, but there's some things that I might have to like tell Brian that he might not understand fully. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's also important to have my 242 that I can go to to talk about those things, to get advice from, because they might just understand because I'm a woman and women's brains are different than guys because I don't (laughs) understand sometimes what Brian is talking about. So it's good for him to to have his guy friends to talk about things with. Obviously, that we're informing each other and that we know and we can partner with each other and pray. Um, But there's sometimes where I'm going to be like, I'll pray with you and I'll love you and I'll support you, but... Yeah, I don't know what to tell you about that. So you might right. have to go and um, also seek with your uh, 242 about that. Mm-hmm. I think that's such a healthy perspective because I think for me, I thought we're not doing this right because we're not like being spiritual <laughs> with right. each other yeah. and almost like a sense of condemnation of mm-hmm. of um, are we really having a healthy relationship if God's not like in the center the way that I think I imagine God should be in the center of a relationship yeah. because it's not something that gets talked about a lot. Right. So mm-hmm. I think that's just such a healthy perspective to, to be able to understand the difference of even intimacy spiritually yeah. in a relationship. Yeah. Um, so that's really, that's awesome. Yeah. I think it's interesting too. Cause I think like the way that I personally like seek the Lord is very different than the way that Brian seeks the Lord. Right. And so if we tried to like merge that together, yeah. um, I just feel like it would actually like clash. Like, mm-hmm. so like seeking the Lord separately, like we'll be able to thrive in that. Cause that's the way that we personally seek the Lord and know yeah. him well. Mm-hmm. And then it's finding like an in-between, like how can we merge these together to talk about and to still seek the Lord and begin to have those more intimate conversations um, and experiences and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Alon, mm-hmm. do you have anything that you want to add into the keeping it godly? No, I think that's great. I think that, um, yeah, you, you really hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's wrap it up and each go around and throw this on you last minute and just say um, one thing. Um, it can be from the podcast that we've already shared, um, but just one thing that you would want to tell the people listening that you would want them to take home with them. So I can go first to give you guys a second <laughs> to think about it. Yay. Um, thank you. Uh, you thinking, get to go thinking. first. My <laughs> tip for you uh, watching or listening it would be to just fully seek the Lord wherever you're at. Even if you, if you're married, if you're engaged, if you're single, if you're dating, wherever you are, like seeking, you cannot go wrong with seeking the Lord, um, and seeking his heart for you and receiving the things that he has for you. Because truthfully dating and relationships and marriage, like they're all beautiful. Um, but God's love for you will always like over compensate for all of those things. And, seeking him first will it will never leave you dry yeah Amen. yeah well said. good Beautiful. boom i i think i always say the same thing I, identity like mm-hmm. know who you are and mentorship make sure that you have someone that's pouring into you that you can go to and 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 seek advice for when you're either pursuing a relationship or in a relationship um i think those two things are always really really important that's good. Yeah, I'll say um, there's no better times to start than now. I think a lot of people wait until mm-hmm. they're, they feel like they have, even with like discovering their hobbies or traveling, they're like, oh, I'll just wait till I find that person or mm-hmm. I'll wait to work on that stuff. And I think that it's important to start now um, and just invest in yourself and invest in your relationship with you, the Lord. Invest in those friendships, um, especially because you don't want to, there's a lot of stories where you know, you don't invest in your inner circle of friends and then you are at this point and then you're engaged and you're like, I don't actually know who's going to be my maid of honor or I don't know who's going to be my best man or my groomsman. And it's important to really invest in those relationships right now. So when that moment or that time comes, you have that community and it's, there's no final, there's no like, oh, you've made it, you, you won the game. Like there's no, it's not a game, it's life. So I would just um, encourage you to continue to invest in yourself and invest in those relationships and the community that means the most to you. Amen. That's That's good. 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 Well, thanks for joining us this week on the Access Podcast. We'll see you next time. Hey, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like button and comment your favorite part of this video and then do us a huge favor. Go and subscribe to the channel and share this episode with a friend that you think it could help.